What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna learn how to find high dividend yield stocks. I know a lot of you guys love dividend investing. You love your dividend stocks, you love dividend growth stocks, but you're always trying to look for that higher yield. A lot of the stocks I invest in is in between that one and 3% range. I get that's on the lower end and some of you guys would like to invest on the higher end of these dividend stocks because you can get some solid companies that are cranking out much higher dividend yields. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say higher dividend yield, I mean between four and 6%. When you start getting higher 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or even 15% dividend yield, that's called a value trap. Go look that up. You wanna stay away from those stocks. We're gonna find out right now, but before that, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'm gonna come out with a whole bunch of new videos every single week. So make sure you hit subscribe, put on that bell notification so you know when my videos drop. All right, so we're gonna jump over to the computer. And as you see, we're on Finviz. So if you don't know how to use Finviz, I have a video that uh, just goes over the basics of it. But we're gonna be going over to the screener portion right there. And this is how we're gonna find our dividend stocks, our high yield dividend stocks. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do, at least for me, my preference, I don't like to invest in anything that is under $10 billion. Um, I like to typically stay with large cap stocks that are more promising, they're a more reputable company, so I can trust I will get a better return that way. Now all we're gonna care about is dividend yield. None of this, nothing else really matters and you'll see why in a second. But we're gonna to go to dividend yield and we want over that 4%. Realistically, we want in between that four and 6%, which I'm about to show you why. But here we go, we narrowed our results down to 126 stocks. That's not that bad. But this is where the work comes into play. Don't expect you to just type in a few buttons with Finviz screener and there you go, invest in those stocks and then you get to sit back. No, now we actually need to do research on these companies. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do my research, which give me the best results. So in order to find the best stocks to invest in with the highest dividend yield, we will be using my favorite site, Seeking Alpha. What we will do is we'll go back to Finviz and the first thing, we're actually gonna click on financial right here because this will show us the dividend yield, right? And we're gonna click on it, and then we click on it again, so it's from high to low. So you may think, wow, ET is 18% dividend yield, that's great, let me put $10,000 into that and make all the money in the world. I'm gonna show you why ET would be an awful stock to invest in. So if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we type in ET, there's a reason why it's that high and it's not a good reason. That's unsustainable. First thing, look at this chart. Is this something you'd wanna invest your money in? You put $10,000 in this stock to make upwards of 10% in dividends, so you're walking away with $1,000 in dividends, but you lose 50% of your position, so that's great. You have depreciated by 5,000, but you get to walk away with $1,000 worth of dividends. That doesn't add up. You're still in the hole $4,000. But let's, let's dig deeper. Let's click on the dividends tab. Here we go, payout ratio, 110%. This is unsustainable. A business cannot continue to pay over 100% of what they're making. Picture that, that's if you had a business, say you're making $100,000 a year, your friend comes by and says, I wanna invest. You're like, great. You invest, I'll give you $110,000 each year. You're only making $100,000 a year. So you're giving every last dollar you make to your investors, and then you're going to the bank and taking out a $10,000 loan to give them even more money? That's a poor business model. That's not something I would want to invest in. If we click on dividend growth, you might see over the years it has been growing. And if we even go to dividend history, it looks like they've been trying to stay consistent over the past five years. 
But the problem is right here, 110%. Their cash dividend payout is over 250%. They are adding debt just to try to pay you out. This is bad because the stock will continue to fall. If we go back to summary, and if we go to the max, or we don't even need to go this far, right? We just need to go 10 years. You can see this is where they peaked and they've been in a massive bear market. Again, this isn't something I would want to invest in. And it will continue to go down because they're continuing to add debt just to pay their investors dividends. It's not worth it. I wouldn't touch this stock at all. And let's just look at one more example of one of these higher ones. How about BBVA? So we type that in on Seeking Alpha. Look at this. So the past year, well, let's let's go back even further. Let's go five years. Awful bear market, down 70%. 10 years, down 75%. Let's go to dividends. It's probably going to be a ridiculous payout. It doesn't even show you what it is. And that means that their earnings are negative. So you can't have a number divided by negative. So th that right there is a really bad sign. We go to dividend growth. It has not been growing. It has been shrinking over the past five years, over the past 10 years even. So even their dividends are in a bear market. Again, something you don't wanna to touch. Don't get tricked by it. You may see, what is it? 15%, oh, this is great. I'm making 15% on dividends. But not only is the stock continuing to go down, but your dividends are also going down in value. This stock is running into the ground. It's gonna be worthless within the next five, 10, 15 years. Something you do not want to invest in. So now let's look at the other side of things. Let's hit on dividends so we could go from low to high and let's look for this four to 6% range because that's the magic number. If you're getting four to 6% in dividend yield, that is a high dividend. That's a high paying dividend stock. You wanna look for quality companies. So if we look down the list, the first thing that pops out is Verizon. We all know Verizon. I have Verizon on my phone. So let's search that. If we go VZ for Verizon, click on that, we're probably gonna see much better values. Before we even do that, let's go to summary. We'll look back, say 10 years. This is a nice bull market. It's been going up almost 10% a year, a little less, 9.4% a year. That's a solid stock to invest in. But you gotta remember on top of that, add that 9% appreciation and add that 4% in dividends. That's 13% a year on average. That's great. This is a solid company to invest in and their payout ratio is only 51%. So they're taking almost half their earnings and reinvesting it back into the company. So you know, there will be long-term growth. And you can see they've been growing their dividends for the past 13 years. Let's look at their chart. It's probably gonna look really nice. And it is, this is nice, stable growth. We go to dividend history, go all time. This is really good dividend growth. Every single quarter since 2000, for the past 20 years, they have been trying to grow their dividends and managing their money in the right way. And the stock on top of that is appreciating. So this I would consider a high dividend yield stock that should make you money in the future. Let's just look at one more. Let's look for that's even higher than 4.2%. Here's one O. O is a realty group. So it's not a stock, it's a REIT. If you don't know REIT, I'll have a video about that but let's look up, oh, we're gonna see the exact same thing. It's gonna have nice growth. Look at this, this is beautiful. Let's go to all time. Since 1994, it has been steadily increasing its dividends. Its dividend growth, very steadily. And if we go to summary, we go to 10 years, 89%, it has been going up 
89% over the course of 10 years. So you're still hitting that 9% appreciation of the stock and that over 4% worth of dividend yield. Now, if you want, you can go a little bit further. You could look at maybe five or 6%, but that's when it's starting to get a little risky. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line is on here at 5%. We'll look at that really quick, but we all know what happened to all the cruise lines recently and they plummeted. So if we go to dividends, see it's not even showing its ratio because they're not making money right now. They're running at a loss. Dividend does have, dividend. Royal Caribbean does have a huge cash reserve to continue to pay their investors, but eventually they might have to take out debt. And that's the last thing you want for a company. You don't want a company to take out debt just to pay you. You'd want a company, that's bad debt. You'd want a company to take out debt to invest it in itself so it could continue to grow with leverage, okay? So that's why you start to get that five, six percent. Sure, there's quality stocks out there that you might be able to find that's given that five or six percent, but you gotta know the full story. You can't just look through the list and invest in all of these stocks. You need to actually search through. Let's go to 6%. Let's see if we could find one. All right, let's look at BNS. That's 6%. You can see debt is under control. So I'm just curious. Let's take a look at BNS. But this is what you have to do. You actually have to look through them, see how their debt looks, see how their stock looks. Okay, it's a little volatile. You can see it's kind of going up and down. It's chopping around. So that 6% might not be guaranteed. It might be bouncing between that 4 and 6%. But let's... Uh, Let's take a look. You can see their, their growth. They're not really a growth stock because they are reaching their limits. So that's why the past 10 years has been pretty much break even. Their dividend history. All right, you can see they really cranked up the dividends a lot. And again, it's been bouncing around for the past 10 years. And let's just, let's see their summary. How, have they been going up over the past 10 years or maybe they're in a bear market? All right, so... They're in a very slight bear market. You lost 7% value over the past 10 years, but you would have made that back with the dividend yield, uh, making 6% a year between that five and six. So if you do the math really quick, you're, you're netting maybe 50%. So you have gone up 50% if you invested 10 years ago. But as you could see, Verizon or the Realty Group ticker O oh, would have been a better investment. You may only be getting that 4%, but the stock is appreciating as well. So you have that beautiful combo of making over 12% a year. But I think now you have a better understanding of how to find these high dividend yield stocks. You know not to go for that 10 or 15% anymore. Go for that 4 to 6, maybe on the lower end, closer to the 4%. But that's what you have to do. You actually have to do the research dig into the company a little bit, make sure everything lines up, they don't have a lot of debt, they're not in a bear market, and then you should be able to find these great stocks to add to your portfolio. But other than that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave comments if you have any questions whatsoever, and I'll see you in the next one.